Hey, what's up everybody? Now, have you ever felt in need of some custom high quality callout titles that just look more visually pleasing than the one that is implemented in Resolve? Well, don't worry, I got you covered. Not only with a pack of four custom high quality callout titles, but I'm also going to teach you how you can create your own. But first, if you're new to this channel, my name is Sebastian and I create weekly videos on DaVinci Resolve to ultimately get you a better understanding of how Resolve works. So if you're interested in that topic, please make sure to subscribe to not miss out on any upcoming content in the future. But with that being said, let's just jump right into Resolve. So guys, before we start this out, I just want to show you what we're creating today. And if you watch in the viewer, this is the callout effect that we're creating today. So let's just watch this. This is a pretty simple callout effect, but still good looking. And before we hop on the Fusion page, let me just show you what my callout pack looks like. So don't bother this clip in the background. This is just to point things out just a little bit better. So let's watch this back. And those are all the four callouts that are included in my pack. And of course, guys, you can customize them. You can change the angle, you can change the position, you can change the text. Um, that one is made specifically round if you want to put a logo or something like that in it. And also you can customize the animations. So if you want to go ahead and purchase this, this is $2 only for all four animations. So with that being said, let's drag in a new fusion composition and we can just do that by clicking on the effects library in the top left corner. Then go to effects and there it says fusion composition. Just click and drag this onto our timeline, hover over it with our playhead and then just click on the fusion tab. So the first thing that you'll notice is there is nothing except the media out note and that is completely fine. So the first thing that we need is a background note and another background note. Go to this background one, click on it, go to the inspector in the top right corner and where it says background alpha, drag this all the way down. And now go to background two, connect this output of background two to the output of background one to create merge one. And on merge one with this selected, hit two on your keyboard so you can see the merge two in your viewer. The next step is to go to this background two and add a rectangle mask and also change the background two color to white. So the next step is right click in the viewer go to guides and then show guides. So these guides will just help us to set everything up that is in the perfect position. So the first step is go to rectangle one, go to the inspector and then change the angle to 45 degrees. So now the next step is grab one of these corners and try to align it as best as possible with those lines and just make it a whole lot smaller like this. And now just zoom in so we can see what we're working on and this is still not perfect so now this is looking pretty good those corners are aligned to this line and those corners are aligned to this line this is looking pretty good we've already created our middle part or dot from the call out so the next step is to grab another background now grab the output of background three and put it to the output of merge one to create merge two. Now click on merge two, hit two on your keyboard so you can see merge two in the viewer. Now the next step is to create the line that goes from this dot to the callout title. So go ahead, go to background three, hit shift spacebar and type in paint, click on add. Now move those up. Now go to background three and drag out the alpha channel so that the background becomes transparent. Now click on this paint one node and in the viewer on top, there is this polyline stroke. Click on that and then zoom in just a bit. Click exactly in the middle. Now zoom out, just make a second point wherever you want the call out to be. And then go to the inspector, go to brush controls and turn down the size to around 0 0.0027. Works pretty fine for the line. Then go to softness and turn this almost all the way down. 
so we have a pretty thin and good looking line. Now the next step is grab another background and connect the output of background 4 to the output of merge 2 to create merge 3. Now go to background 4 and add a rectangle. This is our text box. So let's go to background 4 once again and change the color to white. Now go to the rectangle 2 once again and make this a whole lot smaller. Probably around there. And now try to align the rectangle 2 close to be perfect to this line. So if you don't see this perfectly, just zoom in a bit. And this should look good. So now once we've aligned our rectangle 2, we don't have a lot of controls in the inspector on our rectangle 2 specifically. So let's move background 2 and rectangle 2 up by 1. Go to background 4, hit shift spacebar and type in transform. So and then just add in a transform node. Now with this transform node selected, go to the pivot point in the inspector tab and just align the pivot point close to perfect to the left side of our rectangle mask. Like that. And then just zoom back out. One thing is still missing and that's a text node. So let's create a text node. Drag the output of text 1 to the output of merge 3 to create merge 4. Now go to merge 4 and hit 2 on your keyboard so you can see the merge 4 in the viewer. Now go to text 1 and change the text to whatever you like and then change the font. I'll use Montserrat for this because I just think that it looks good. Now since the background of the rectangle is wide and our text is wide, we gotta change our text. And for this tutorial, I'll just make it black. Then I put it in this letterbox and this looks pretty good. So now with text one selected, click on this rectangle two to create a rectangle connected to our text one. So now with this rectangle three selected, just make it a little bit smaller so that it just fits in the text like this. And you'll see why we do that in a minute. So now go to merge four and connect the output of merge four to the input of media out. So this is the callout that we've created and as you see there are no animations. So let's start animating. So the first thing that pops up on a callout title is almost always the middle dot. So let's go to rectangle 1 which is our middle dot. Go to frame 14. Now go to the inspector, keyframe the angle, the height and the width. Go to frame 0. Drag down the angle just a bit and drag down the height and the width. Now when we play this back, this is what we got. So the next step is that this line pops out of this middle circle as the middle circle is at its biggest part. So now let's go to frame 14, go to the paint 1 and then go to stroke controls in the inspector. And under stroke controls there is your right on and now drag the end part and turn this all the way down and then keyframe it. Now go forward maybe 14 frames and then bring up the end part of this right on effect. Once we've done that, this should look something like this. That's a pretty linear movement, but that doesn't matter for now. So the next step is go to the transform one and uncheck this use size and aspect in the inspector. And when you uncheck that, we can change the X size. And when you set your pivot point to all the way to the left, we can just drag this X size all the way to the left to make this box disappear. So when this box is not visible at all, go ahead and keyframe this X size and then move forward 14 frames and then just drag this X size part back up to one. So now once you've done that, we want the text to be animated in as our box is growing over time. So let's go to our keyframe where our box is not visible at all. Go to the text one node and if you've created this rectangle 3 that is connected to the text 1, you can just go to layout in the inspector on the text node and drag the center part all the way to the left until you don't see your text anymore. Then keyframe it and then go forward to frame 38 where this white box is completely visible. And then just drag in the center part all the way to the right again. And now we got an animation that looks like this. As you might have already seen, 
this movement is pretty linear and not very pleasing at all to watch. So what we're going to do about this is go to the spline window, make this a little bit bigger. So now go to the rectangle one and uncheck everything except width. Then go to zoom to fit, highlight both keyframes, right click in the middle of this line, go to ease and out cubic. And now basically just repeat this process for every keyframe that you've made. So now let me speed this up to not waste your time. So now once you've animated everything, this should look something like this. And this is way more smooth. So now we can animate this off as well. Go to frame 90, go to text 1 in the inspector and keyframe it right there. Then go forward 10 frames and drag the center part all the way to the left once again until our text is not visible at all. Now the next step is go to frame 90 once again. Go to the transform 1 and keyframe this X size at frame 90. Then go forward to frame 100 and then drag this X size all the way down. On frame 100, go to the paint 1 node, keyframe the right on, go forward 10 frames and then drag this end part all the way down. Now the next step and the last step is go to this rectangle 1 on frame 110 and there keyframe the width, the height and the angle and then go to frame 119 which is the last frame of this composition and drag the width down the height down and just drag the angle down and now we gotta make those animations smooth as well so let's open up our spline window once again and once again just do this one by one highlight those keyframes right click go to ease and now choose in cubic and now basically just repeat this process for every one of those keyframes. Now let me speed this up once again to not waste your time. So now once we've done that we can go back to the edit page, right click on our composition, render cage fusion output and turn this on on. As this is rendered out we can watch this back to see what we have created in the last few minutes. So now if you ask me, this looks pretty good. So guys, when you want to create your own custom callout titles, this is all you need to know. So guys, that is all I got for now. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If so, please consider liking. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to not miss out on any upcoming content in the future. But also, if you want to grab my callout pack, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. And you guys can purchase this for only $2 from my website, which just helps to keep me going with this channel and to increase the quality of my videos. So that would be highly appreciated. But yeah, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.